Hi all, welcome to my channel on statistical analysis and in this tutorial we are going to look at the calculation of standard deviation. So let me explain the standard deviation first of all. We will look at this uh, chart. In this I have listed down 10 elements that is the first element which is having a value of 12, the second element which is having a value of 25, the third which is having a value of 6 and fourth having a value of 18. Likewise I have listed down 10 elements in this case and then I have calculated its mean value that is going to be 18.7 so the meaning of the standard deviation is how much each value is deviated from the mean now for example look, if you look at the first value that is 12 12 is deviated from 18.7 by 6.7 that is the distance here and then if you look at the 25 25 is deviated from 18.7 by uh, 6.3 right so likewise you can uh, calculate all these deviations now for example here 6 is deviated by 12.7 and 18 is divided by just 0.7 so likewise you can calculate all the deviations that you are getting uh, for each and every element from the mean so next let's see how to calculate the standard deviation from this data so to do that i have put them into a table here so the first data value is 12 the second data value is 25 third data value is 6 likewise we have i have put them all here and then i have got the deviations also the first value is deviated from the mean by 6.7 and the second value is deviated by 6.3 and also you can see that this uh, this deviation is negative because uh, 18.7 is greater than 12 and the second deviation is positive as 25 is greater than 18.7 so now we have all the deviations now i will explain how to calculate the equation so first of all we take x minus x bar that is the deviation deviation of a value from the mean now if i just take the sigma or the addition of all these deviations you will get a zero uh, why it happens is where we have positive values and negative values then they will cancel out with each other so the total is going to be zero so that is not what i expect as the deviation therefore in order to get rid of this problem where the positive and negative are going to be cancelled out with each other i am calculating the square of the deviation so you can see that once i get the square of a, va of a value whether it is positive or negative it's going to be positive so minus 6.7 is going to become 44.89 6.3 is going to become 39.69 likewise you will get a set of positive numbers so that is the total of the squared deviation now in this equation sigma x minus x bar squared is the total deviation that you will get for each and every element in the data set now we have the total deviation i need the deviation for an individual element in order to get the deviation for an individual element what i will do is i will divide the total deviation by the number of elements that i am having here so this is the total deviation i divide it by n so now i will get the deviation for an individual value or that is the average deviation that you will get for a, for any value of this data set now again to get the standard deviation we have to square that we have to we have to take the square root of that value the reason is in order to get in order to get rid of this negative sign we have squared this x minus x bar value so get to get rid of that uh, squared value we, we will have to take the square root as the final answer that will make the equation dimensionally consistent because we have squared it in order to get rid of that square we have to take the square root at the end so you take the square root and that will be the standard deviation now this is the general definition of the standard deviation which most of the time we are not using because we have a lot of negative signs so we can convert this general definition into this form where we have only a single negative time ne negative sign so in this case the equation is going to be sigma x squared that is the this is the x value and we square it and we divide it by n minus x bar x bar is the mean value we take the square of the mean value and you take this total value and you take the square root of that you will get the standard deviation so let's look at some e uh, some ex examples for different data sets and see how to calculate the standard deviation first we will look at the discrete data set so we have our 
usual data set the number of goals scored in 10 football matches and then we can put them into a table like this so the element of the first match that is 3 second match is 5 third match is 2 likewise I have the values and I have a total of 38 so from the previous calculations you can remember that the mean value of this data set is 38 that is third mean value is 3.8 that is 38 divided by 10 and the squared value is going to be 3 squared is 9 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4. Likewise, the total squared deviation is 184. So now I can just plug in the values to the equation. Equation sigma x squared over n minus x bar squared. Sigma x squared, that is here, the total squared value, that is 184. We divide it by 10, that is n. And then you mine, you deduct 3.8 squared. So when you do that, you do the calculations, 18.4 minus 14.44, and that is 3.96 square root. And when you take the square root, that is 1.9896. So that is the standard deviation that you will have for the uh, for this discrete data set. So that will indicate how much the data values are deviated from the mean value or the mean number of goals that you are scoring in a match. Now we will see how to calculate the standard deviation for a discrete group data set. So we have our usual example that is number of goals scored in 50 football matches. So I can put them into a table like this. So number of goals uh, 0, there are 6 matches. Number of goals 1, there are 4 matches. Likewise, I have listed them down here. Now if you look at the standard deviation equation, that equation is slightly different. The difference comes like this. Now. Uh, I have in the previous cases the frequency is always 1 that is I had 1 0 or 1 1 1 2 1 3 likewise I had only one from that specific value but in this case I have a certain number of frequency from that specific value so now in order to account for that in this equation instead of taking just the x square of an individual value I have to multiply how many values are there so when you do that multiplication you have this fx squared column so the important thing you have to remember is there is nothing different in this equation than the previous equation we have looked at other than this frequency coming here. That frequency comes because these x values are repeated a number of times or a, or a value by f. So in order to account for that we will multiply by f. Now this is the equation and then for that we have the fx squared. To get the fx squared we have this fx column. This column we will multiply again with the number of goals and then uh, we will get the fx squared column and then we have the totals of them all. So the standard deviation is sigma fx squared that is going to be 805 divided by 50 that is the total number of values minus x bar squared. x bar we have calculated earlier that is 3.38 and then when you put, put in the values you will get 4.68 square root and finally you will get 2.16. This 2.16 is the standard deviation that you will get for this data set. That is the deviation of the goal numbers from the mean value, mean is 3.38. So the third one is the discrete, uh, not discrete, the continuous group data set. We have the, again the usual example that is age of 50 employees. So here also when we did, when we did the calculation for the mean also, we had this x value because we have groups here we cannot assign a specific value for a group therefore we take the group midpoint so you have the x value and then as usual we get the fx that is the uh, multiplication of the frequency with the x value and to calculate the standard deviation we need the fx squared the equation is same as the discrete group data set there is nothing different here the only thing is we take the group midpoint as the x value same as the calculation with the mean so we take the fx squared and these are the totals that you are getting here and as I said earlier, it's the same equation. Sigma fx squared is 77,440. We divide by 50 and minus 37.6. That is the mean value we have calculated earlier. You do these calculations and finally, you get the standard deviation to be 11.62. So now we have calculated the standard deviation for the three different data sets. There is a discrete data set, discrete group data set and the continuous group data set. So that will end the first part of the tutorial series which covered the descriptive statistics. We have done the central tendencies as well as the spread measurements and those are the basic calculations that you will be doing with statistical analysis. So in the next tutorial I am going to look at the correlation and the regression analysis that is another part of statistical analysis that we will be requiring when you are going to do a course in statistics.